Well, 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 I asked you guys on Twitter to send me some questions so that way I can do a Q&A video. And as always, you come through and respond. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much for that. Let's see if these questions are any good today, huh? All right. Let's go ahead and kick this off so we can get through some here in the next 12 to 15 minutes. Um, first question from Edsel4. In today's era, fans tend to turn on the baby face and cheer for the heel. How do you book a top baby face without them getting stale and not having the fans turn on them? You avoid the Cena Reigns treatment of not just pushing them, but really forcing them down everybody's throat and always preventing them, presenting them in this kind of shining beacon way and going from them having to be the one to overcome the obstacles to being the one that actually is the obstacle. Another way to do it is to actually make goddamn interesting characters. Like guys like Austin The Rock and so many others over the years were compelling baby faces because they were just damn interesting characters. Like they had a cool factor. And so many of the guys that are prostituted out there as baby faces, the hell would you want to get behind them for? And in some cases, the best thing to do is when in doubt, heal them out. When you look at what they did with Daniel Bryan, even Daniel Bryan fans have got, got to get real here. In 2010, 2011, when he was coming from the NXT show and Miz was his coach, and da, 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 da. like you could you could see he was a good talent, but he was not a superstar, and he certainly was not somebody that you would build your company around or make a major major player. You just wouldn't. And if you're in WWE spot, if you were in Vista spot, and you looked at 2010 Daniel Bryan and you said that. I would call you out because that's clown school shit. He was just a dude. He was a jag, just another guy. But eventually, as you go and start getting into 2000, late 2011 and then 2012, and you talk about the no movement, you talk about him and his character turn, and now he starts to go to kind of this Owen Hart type of role, and then eventually later on with Team Helena, with Kane, like... It allowed him to work on being a sports entertainer. It allowed him to work on the other side of the fence. It allowed him to understand things differently from a different perspective and a different philosophy. So that way, he started entertaining people in a different way. Now he comes back and you put the great ring work with the fact that he can actually be a personality. And now you've got somebody that the fans really, really, truly want to get behind. Like the whole naive thing of the fans said, well, if they didn't have a Daniel Bryan from the beginning in 2010, 2011, they would have gotten the same reaction to 2014 bullshit. You're not right, and you know you're not right, so stop saying that type of dumb stuff. So those are a couple of ways. Dave G, what was the last year where you enjoyed wrestling? Or excuse me, he put, what was the last year where you enjoyed the wrestling? I like how he puts it, the wrestling. Um, yeah, I grew up in the Hogan era. Obviously, watched the Attitude Era, the Monday Night Wars. Um, but man, nothing could touch like 2011, 2012. So many things going on. You had TNA was running pretty well at that time. They were, you had WWE, you had 2011, you know, started the thing with Smokey and the Mark Henry shtick. You had assumed Jeff Jarrett position. You had 15 reasons Randy Orton sucked. The man Tafalon with b Red. like I go on and on through these different things. You know, you had to build up to Sting and Hogan at Bound for Glory. If y'all like go way, way back, remember, you know, how much I was into that. Like that was a time where we were innovative. That was a time where we were truly different and unique and we were big characters and it felt more like a show instead of the same old lame ass one person talking about something. Like that was so much fun. Then even when the product was crap, and there were plenty of times that the product was crap, it's being able to interact with the guys and talk about it on camera and do all the crazy, stupid, dumb stuff that we did, being like we're 10, 11, 12 years old again, like that to me is the top. So it'll never, ever get better as a wrestling fan, period. Declan McLaughlin asks, what are the five most overrated wrestlers in your lifetime? Brett and Sean are one and two. I don't care what order you put them in, but each are the same. Excellence of execution and the excellence of putting people on to turning their remote to the other channel. Shawn Michaels, he is the showstopper. He absolutely was, because when he would come on, hundreds of thousands of people would stop watching the show and watch something else. Like, y'all might love him as more serious fans, as being these great performers and all of that. That's great and cool and all. 
when you start hearing people talk about them being the greatest wrestlers ever, who gives a crap? I compare it to what you will see in acting. Daniel Day-Lewis, phenomenal actor. Phenomenal actor. Like, he immerses himself in his characters. He can tell different types of stories. You know, he's not a one-trick pony in that sense. But for my definition, for what that business is truly about, which is making money, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, is a significantly better actor. While he's not technically, fundamentally a better actor than the immortal Daniel Day-Lewis, who is awesome. He is for the that niche and that type of fan. But it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson that you would rather attach a big budget project to because you have much greater confidence that he's going to deliver the goods at the box office. That's the more valuable guy. That's the better actor. Because that's what you're in the business of is making money. Other overrated guys, Austin in the sense of not that he wasn't a star or superstar or a megastar or a household name or white hot during this time. It's the fact that when people try to sit there and get this revisionist history that he's the biggest star of all time when his top run was barely three years. Now, we need a little bit more run time than that. And these folks that say when he was hot, that he was hotter than anybody else in the history of the business, I would just strongly dispute that. And you have plenty of business metrics that would clearly suggest otherwise. But go ahead. Believe it because Uncle Dave has told you that for many years because you believe everything Uncle Dave says like sheep. Um, as far as other overrated wrestlers, oh, oh my goodness. Um, Cena and Orton, like it's got a very heavy breakfast club lean. It's true. Like look at Cena and imagine thinking that he's actually a megastar. You're a clown. Horror Movie Review 73, do you plan on bringing back the Retro Review Series anytime soon? I'm thinking about doing a lot of things with this channel, and that is something that I have thought about. No commitments or guarantees at all at this point. At RealMe6200, could WWE just end up turning reins into some carbon, carb, carb, yeah, easy for me to say, some carbon copy of Brock Lesnar should they decide to go more of a heel route with him now that he's with Paul Heyman? It could kind of be that, and while that would seem kind of lazy... Uh, it's the low-hanging fruit. It's the easiest thing to do. At the same token, it still represents doing something seismically different with Roman Reigns. So for the time being, I'm okay with it. Ash the King asked, how would you rank AJ Styles' time at WWE? Um, it's been okay. I could think he's done his best. Um, there's a period of time where he was, I thought he was doing some really good work. And then it feels like sometimes they're just kind of waffling with him a little bit. Like, he, he, here's the deal to me, is that it will always be hard to get behind an AJ Styles in a WWE ring, a WWE show. Because I will always associate him with TNA. Like, he was the TNA dude. He was TNA. So I, I, I've never truly been able to fully get behind it, if that makes sense. It's not because he hasn't tried or not because at times he hasn't done a good job. It's just, it's okay. It hasn't been earth-shattering, though, or groundbreaking. And little DJ Boy asks, to you, what makes a successful wrestling career? A successful wrestling career, to me, means you've made enough money during your time where you can not have to work another day the rest of your life if you chose not to. A successful wrestling career is one where you've been able to do that, and you're also able to actually physically move around and enjoy some of the fruits of your labor in the twilight and golden years of your life. Successful wrestling career is somebody that people actually remember, and not as a joke, but you feel like they made a contribution, they had a legacy, they had an impact. Those are some of the things I look at if I was thinking like successful wrestling career. That, that, that's something that I would look at, some of those things. Colton587, what's one match you'd like to see at WrestleMania 37? Well, the easy answer is always going to be John Cena versus Randy Orton Breakfast Club Battle Royale. It's just a Breakfast Club battle. Like, the politics angle that you could take from the promo standpoint alone, you know, they've never done a one-on-one -on, -one on Mania, and someday they have to do it. It is absolutely the right call, and I know it makes a lot of you want to vomit in your mouth. If, if there was ever an angle... You asked WWE to let me book. That is the one. Give me from Royal Rumble until WrestleMania. And I guarantee that one you would enjoy. 
In terms of another match, I would like to see at WrestleMania 37. Jesus. Imagine if it was Keith Lee versus Mark Henry. That's all I'll say. Uh, at Andreas Byron, what would WWE be like if Vince McMahon retired at 100 years old? Oh, good God. Oh, good God. Let's hope that never, ever happens. Like, it is really interesting. It is Vince is, what, 75 now? Is that right? So you're going to get to a point someday that's not as far off as it might seem where he's going to retire. Or he's going to pass away, which means he'll also be out of the picture. Or he's going to be forced out. Like, I'd be surprised if it didn't happen sometime within the next five years. My God, what a landscape-changing day that would be in the world of wrestling, wouldn't it? Oh, but if he didn't retire until he was 100 years old, that means there's probably not a company left because he would run him into the ground. At Vinny E21, what do you think of the idea of Wade Barrett being the leader of Retribution and making it 10 years in the making revenge storyline for a failed Nexus run? What the hell would be the point at that moment? The one that buried him was seen and he's not even around. That would just be rehashing really old crap for a lot of people that aren't even watching the product anymore. So I absolutely, positively would have zero interest in that, I've got to say. Jay Harper Games 90, if you had the booker spot in AEW, would you push the same talent the current booker is or different and why? Um, I don't think it's necessarily a question of the talent per se, although I would be doing more to feature somebody like the Luchasaurus, obviously, putting my Mark stuff aside, like to push the Luchasaurus as a much bigger deal than how he is currently presented. Um, I don't think it's, to me, it's necessarily an issue of the talent that is being pushed. It's more about how the talent is being presented or pushed. Um, like a perfect example to me of somebody who has been an absolute wet fart in AEW is Kenny Omega. Like, I mean, even though I think a lot of Omega fans would say that his run in AEW this almost now year is largely forgettable. Isn't it? Like there's somebody, it's not about whether or not he should be pushed. It's about how he should be pushed and featured. I mean, they have guys on the show that I really like that I do appreciate how they're pushed. I think it's less about, like I would even push the young bucks. As much as I hate the bucks of suck, I would push them. Because they do move merch. I cannot take that away from them. There is a name recognition there. There's a little bit of internet presence there. How I would do it would be vastly and entirely different from how they're booking themselves, basically. But I certainly would still push them. Like, look, not everybody has to be aligned with their same vision to, in order to make it work. Like, a good leader should be able to adapt and adjust to the personnel that he has and get them to come along in the journey. Uh, Google My Food asks, what's your least, fa least favorite match that involved one of your favorite wrestlers, and what's your favorite match that involved your least favorite wrestler? Least favorite match that involved one of your favorite wrestlers. Oh, God. Goldberg Lesnar at 20. I was a huge Goldberg WCW fan. That match was just got awful. Just got awful. Oh, God, that was so bad. Everything about them is just screwed up. What's your favorite match that involved your least favorite wrestler? <laughs> Chuck Norris, super kick! <laughs> Roundhouse kick, excuse me. He kicked that Memphis big card piece of crap straight in the chin. Yeah! That match is awesome. Why? Because that happened, period. At Zoe to Zion, Pelicans fan apparently, when do you think Otis should cash in Money in the Bank? I, I see this question and I legitimately forgot that Otis is still Money in the Bank guy. And I think I, I even watched SmackDown last night and even saw him with the briefcase and it still didn't register that, oh shit, he, he still has Money in the Bank. Uh, if they do it soon like they need to do it and have him not do it successfully, otherwise I'm in no rush to see it right now. Just... Be patient. Wait your time. At Jake and King 12, who should face Roman at Mania? Like, if it's not Brock Lesnar, what's the point? 
Uh, that is the low-hanging fruit. That is the most obvious story there. Some might say somebody like a Keith Lee or a Big E or some other guys, you know, maybe. But, but the obvious answer right now is Brock Lesnar. That is the answer. That is the dude. Uh, Byron Andreas asked a different question. Should Mabel be in the Hall of Fame? Why do you think he's not? I mean, there are no standards for the Hall of Fame anyway, so what the hell, why not? Why is he not? I don't know. Great question. I couldn't tell you. Maybe it's because another one they didn't want to put in right after he died. I really legitimately don't know. At jgore 492 closes us out, is why do you think WWE decided now to pull the trigger on the Roman heel turn? And do you think it will become a bigger star because of it? I certainly think I could bear him some nice fruit in terms of future endeavors, his movie career. Um, my hope is, is that it will give them at least a little bit of a kick in the pants here, a little bit of a shot of adrenaline as we get ready to start NFL season. Um, I, I, I talked about this in the Roman video that was uploaded to the channel, um, or the, the second one. Talking about, you know, there's a couple of different factors. I think it got to the point where he was gone for a few months and they realized that, yeah, it's bad, but it wasn't like it was a whole lot better with him anyways. And they were kind of in a desperate spot. And in part because they don't have live fans there right now, so they don't really have to worry about the live attendance being impacted. Like, this is a time to be innovative and do different, and they're frankly kind of desperate. That's what I kind of think ultimately led to it. Uh, so that's it for this Q&A. Again, thank you to everyone who... Tuned in, asked your questions, etc. Guess you'll see me for more videos on this channel coming up soon. And remember, as always, OTR Essential, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Bye-bye.